Prophecies and Predictions by Edward A. Meyer, Switzerland My eyes and mind see things of the future which will take place from today, the year 1958, and therefore will be. Therefore I see and comprehend things through the passage of time, up to the most distant future, that still remain hidden from the earth people. Many years will pass before my prophecies and predictions have been fulfilled, and a new and better time begins. Until then, however, it is still far, very far, and much misery and need as well as evil, wars, terror, chaos, and catastrophes will have broken over humanity and the world. Until now, gigantic crowds of religious believers wandered over the earth. And also, in the future, uncountable numbers of believers of unbelievably many lunatic sects will trample the surface of the earth, whereby some sect gurus will drive their believers to mass suicide and murder. They will spread over everything like poisonous mushrooms, and their delusions will peal like a trumpet call over the entire world. Sectarianism will bear bad fruit and will cost many lives through murder and suicide, as also through politics and power lust in diverse countries, hundreds of thousands of people will be murdered, as in the Soviet Union, which will be dissolved no later than 1991, and in East Germany which will, however, only exist until the late 80s of this century. Thereafter, Germany will be reunified. Whereby, in contrast, in Iraq a war will be led through the United States of America, through their country's president. However, this will be without success, for which reason one of his sons, who will likewise be the USA's head of power, will, in the third millennium, unleash a second war in Iraq, which will ultimately lead to an unbelievable disaster and to torturing as well as to mass murder through U.S. armed forces and the rebellious. Earth human, I see the great expanses of the earth, the almost boundless oceans, the great continents, mighty mountains, the vast forests, bubbling springs, the flowing brooks, rivers, and all the lakes, and I see how they will all, at the hand of man, be harmed and made sick, destroyed, and the majority will be annihilated. Centuries or millennia will not have passed before all that happens, and all that which is yet to say in words of prophecy and prediction happens, because the beginning of all the evil had already begun with the development of modern technology and with the terrors of both world wars. In the future, further evil wars will be spread over the world, which will become so numerous that the normal person will lose track. Through war and rebellion, people will be exterminated and countries will collapse in on themselves, and a new name will be given by every power to the land which is stolen under his command, whereby the traditional names cease to exist. Many peoples, workers, beggars, service people, extremists, anarchists, and neo-Nazis will, as opponents against the people hostile and corrupt authorities, provoke misery, need, murder, and manslaughter, as well as terror, rebellion, and revolution, as well as violent demonstrations and much destruction of much personal property and people's acquisitions. Terrorists will spread murder and destruction worldwide. Thereafter they return again to their slippery cracks and hide in order to hatch new monstrosities and bring death and corruption over humanity. The terrorists, warmongers, wrongdoers, prostitutes, and criminals will organize themselves worldwide and delude themselves that they are kings and emperors of the world, while the people and the organizations established for maintaining order watch powerlessly and have to creep away in order to protect their lives. Even next year on September 13th, 1959, using rocket propulsion, the Earth human, respectively the Soviet Union, will make a hard landing of an unmanned object on the moon. And on April 12th, 1961, an Earth human will climb high in the sky with a rocket to orbit around in the Earth's outer space. Then on February 3rd, 1966, an aerospace object will make a soft landing on the moon. Then in 1968, the outer fringes of Earth's space will be left, and later the first trip to the moon will be undertaken, whereby up until the year 1972, 5-5, five five, manned moon landings will take place through the USA, 
while a sixth moon landing, supposedly the first, on August 20th, 1969, will rest only on a worldwide staged deceit as a result of the political armament race with the Soviet Union. The time has just begun when the human conquers the depths of the oceans and slowly the power of the sun in order to win diverse energies from them. And the human is on the paths. In the next decades up to the new millennium, to unlocking the secret of life, in that he will unravel the gene. Likewise, in the 80s of this 20th century, it will happen that, that the human can be bred through artificial fertilization, while already at the turn of the third millennium, humans and animals will be able to be cloned out of single cells without any actual act of procreation. At the close of the second millennium, humans will already busy themselves with the first far-reaching steps in the genetic manipulation of flora and fauna. Then, in the third millennium, genetic manipulation will begin on the human. The end of the second millennium will, on one hand, be marked by very rapidly establishing computer technology, and on the other hand, rebellion and a great war which would be called the first Gulf War, and a second Gulf War would follow coinciding with the start of the third millennium, released by the USA, who has already deluded itself since the First World War, that it is the world police, and also wants to bring world control under its sword. Towards the end of the second and beginning of the third millennium, the human will take himself for creation and cause harm and bring destruction to the entire earth, effective in the whole of nature. And the time is already coming when the peoples will begin to mix and when many people will flee from their homeland countries to find a hideout somewhere else in foreign countries, and there will be many refugees who have to fight to maintain their lives, while very many others creep into the structures of the better-positioned countries as economic refugees. Prostitution is already on the way worldwide to becoming a public and officially sanctioned enterprise which cannot be curbed and which will be accountable to the state for taxes, as in this regard, Ethics will no longer have a role to play, in the same way that neither will propriety and health. Because of unrestricted prostitution, in about 25 years an already embryonic deadly epidemic will develop worldwide that will be named AIDS and will finally cost several hundred million human lives. Also child prostitution is catching on increasingly in monstrous measure, as is the sexual murder of women and children. Trade in humans with children and women regarding prostitution and for the purpose of human organ trade has now already become mundane, yet this evil will still increase until the turn of the millennium and into the third millennium, as organ transplantation from human to human will soon, already in a few years, become an everyday occurrence for the earth people. Already, in a few years, Marriage between man and woman would only be formed for appearances without a binding love. Rather, they would be only joined together out of the personal interests of the individual partners, with the result that the marriage union is just lies and deception and would no longer be constant. Consequently, marriages end ever more in divorce. Also, the whole of nature will rise up, and indeed against the human and his irresponsible machinations with which he disturbs the course of the natural things as well as of the flora and fauna and of all life. Storms, ranging from heavy to the heaviest will, from now on, until far into the third millennium, bring unspeakably much misery, need, and suffering to the human as has never happened since time immemorial. The most severe earth and sea quakes will take effect with primeval-like force and demand millions of human lives, as also will deluge-like masses of rain that evoke monstrous flooding and cause mighty destruction, as the human has never before collectively experienced or seen. And what results in the last 42 years of the second millennium, along with very many other evils, along with chaos, ghastliness, and catastrophes that are not mentioned, carries everything on also into the third millennium and exacts its tribute all around. And when the second millennium comes to an end, then the human stands in the darkness of his existence, in that he wanders around in an impenetrable labyrinth 
out of which he can no longer find his way, because it will be deep night in his consciousness, whereby, however, the threatening red glowing and the fiery traps of religions and sects lie in wait. And the religions and sects shake in rage, because the believers who finally want to utilize the truth run away from them. Yet the fiery traps of the religious power, plays of the religions and sects grasp after the young people in order to burn them in the flames of religious fanaticism and make them incapable of escape. So, young people want to protect themselves from the lies and false teaching of the religions and sects, as their ghastly rage, with which they gather believers around themselves with lies and deceit, will know no bounds. Already now, and first properly in the third millennium, the human knows deep within himself that he must not utilize religions and sects. Rather, the effective truth, the creational truth, as well as the creational laws and directives. Yet although he hears the voice of truth in himself, he does not want to hear it, because he will be tormented by religious angst and cannot free himself from his religious or sectarian belief because he expects divine punishment for that, were he to do that. And if the human seeks the effective truth, he will be misled and deceived, because in the third millennium, even more than in the second, there will be innumerable sectarians who ply a lucrative trade with their delusional false teachings and make horrendous profits from them. Also the simple human himself, as well as the rich, will still only see his mammon, count it and strive for wealth, luxury, amusements, and holidays, whereas the administration and the authorities will exploit the commoner with all kinds of new excises and taxes. In the third millennium, the Moloch mammon will bring forth much worse blooms than in the twentieth century, because the immoral and the wrongdoers, as well as white-collar criminality and warmongery and so on, would no longer recognize boundaries when it comes to hoarding mammon. Criminal leaders of commerce will be amicable towards million-dollar payments and million-dollar golden handshakes and engage in maladministration and thereby drive even quite traditional companies to ruin, as also the commoners in private bankruptcies will walk away when they can no longer control their finances. Because they are driven away from reliable money and are equipped with plastic money in the form of plastic cards with which they subsist in the circumstances of their indebtedness, with sundries paid for on credit, and get into horrendous debt, whereby also special companies come into existence for the administration of plastic cards. While the banks will be in on that, with plastic cards they will name credit cards, in order to make their customers dependent, whereby they quite particularly have their eye set on the youth who thereby pile up immense mountains of debt which drive them into need and misery. The fire of maladministration spreads itself constantly, also in the inept governments, which, likewise driven by maladministration, manage their own countries into ruin when they accrue such immense debts that they rise in such a fashion that the country must be declared bankrupt. And it will be that even before the time of the third millennium, and indeed in 1993, a political and commercial European dictator will arise that will be called the European Union and, in evil, will carry the number 666, as through this the citizens of all member countries will finally be brought under total control through biometric data in identification, devices and in the form of small data chips in the head or body inserted in a biometric identification system that would be overseen and controlled through a central data bank whereby finally the whereabouts of every human can be exactly determined to the meter. First the USA, and later the European Union will introduce this modern human enslavement. Thereafter, then other countries will also follow, all preceding the Swiss, whereby, through this process, the personal and national citizens' human rights will be drastically trimmed, which fundamentally will be originally already planned at the construction of the European Union, whereby the citizen is finally deemed fully incapable of managing his own affairs and should be governed only by the authorities, without having a right to a say regarding certain government things and decisions. The morals of very many people will completely sink. 
whereby many villages and every city will be a Sodom and Gomorrah, as the prostitution of adults and children takes on completely boundless forms. Many young people will, in every form and manner, deteriorate to extremism in everyday life as well as in their professional life, whereby drug, medication, alcohol and narcotic addiction take the upper hand. Many young people will flock to extreme radical skinhead and neo-Nazi fronts and wave their flags and form corresponding organisations that cause much damage and harm, indiscriminately attack innocent people on the streets and not seldom beat them until they are cripples. In the coming time, many blood banks will be contaminated by viruses and will make the people sick and will deliver death if the blood is transfunded, transfundiate, correct, transfused, transfusioniate. According to data from the Pliaren linguists for the German and Latin languages, towards the end of the 20th century, new planets will continuously be discovered at distant solar systems that, however, can bear no human life. New solar satellites will also be discovered in our solar system that move far outside the orbit of Pluto, yet that will first be after the turn of the millennium. Already in 20 years the time will come that newly serious plagues, deadly for the human, come about especially in Africa, as also, however, in other countries, and in part there would be no cure for them. Furthermore, great famines will rage in the third world, whereas in the wealthy industrialized countries, gigantic warehouses are stored with cans and miscellaneous groceries, while farmers senselessly destroy fruit and vegetables and so on because they don't want to sell their wares at opportune prices, because their greed for money and wealth will know no bounds which is why they also will break up their land and their worldly possessions for jingling coins, to live from that instead of having to go to an honest job anymore. The human will be ever more unscrupulously addicted to greed for money and wealth, whereby he would secretly commit the murder of his parents, which would never be solved, in order to inherit from them. It comes about ever more frequently that mothers murder their children at birth or abandon them, while step-parents beat their children to death, as well as leave them to die of thirst and starve. In the future, many families will be destroyed through this, because fathers or mothers live in endless strife, which often also leads to the fathers or mothers murdering all the family members. In 30 years, the business prosperity which will be restrained until then will collapse and induce immeasurably high joblessness in all industrial countries, whereby not only many millions of people will be without work and be benefiting from handouts. Rather also, families will be destroyed, criminality will spread out, and murders will be committed. An unimagined impending asylum-seeker problem will break over the industrialized countries before the turn of the millennium and evoke asylum-seeker tourism through which a great many social elements emigrate who release a crime wave whereby the worldly possessions of many people will no longer be safe, nor will life and limb. Through the madness of his overpopulation, the human has already detrimentally altered the world and the climate in such a way that a climbing climatic warming becomes apparent that will be carried far into the third millennium and release monstrous natural catastrophes. Yet that will not be the end, because everything goes further in the same style. And at the beginning of the third millennium, more than seven billion people will be on the earth, which will lead to even greater harm and to destruction worldwide, because on one hand, nature strikes back in vengeance, and on the other hand, the human undertakes everything which will destroy the entire environment and life. The constantly climbing mass of overpopulation leads to apathy, and the softening of the people whereby the genuine interpersonal relationships grow cold and disappear, while the masculine gender, however still slowly, unstoppably becomes less potent. Through atomic contamination of the environment, through atomic explosions, atomic power plants and radioactive waste from industry and hospitals, and so on, 
the entire life of fauna and flora as well as of humans will be ever more injured and disturbed in health while also mutations of fauna and flora as well as of humans will appear in terrible ways neither air bodies of water land mountains nor seas will be safe from the human in the future because as he creates room everywhere for the growing overpopulation and for sporting purposes he irrevocably destroys everything through ski lifts mass settlement mountain climbing racing with motor vehicles and motor boats as well as monstrous domestic buildings which tower high into the sky as well as with street and tunnel construction and so on the human will populate the earth the air and the seas more and more and take all the living space which is for the native wildlife and thereby exterminate countless species and varieties the human elevates himself ever more to commander over the earth and already in the coming 20 years he will make an effort to strive for the power of creation whereby he will know no further barriers yet everything will turn against him because he will stray like a drunk blind ruler through the world irritated and tormented in delusion and at the end of his path he will fall into a deep abyss in the coming time entire cities will sprout out of the ground and the countryside will empty itself ever more of people the order of the people turns ever more towards instability and many would make their own laws and live by them the time will come in the third millennium when there will no longer be enough nourishment for all the people which will lead to ghastly scenes of starvation and murder and manslaughter criminals and wrongdoers already spread themselves through the cities and organized gangs will ambush beat up or even kill simply for fun or to rob because peaceful games and a normal life will no longer be sufficient for them not only will many people suffer hunger but they will also be set out in the cold turn blue and freeze and it would be thereby that many rather seek death than live an unworthy life in the bitterest poverty and begging in order to keep body and soul together in the future many people will catapult themselves out of life because they are addicted to drugs have become sick or old and feel lonely helpless and abandoned because feelings of neighborliness deteriorate ever more to pure expediency and addiction to profit for a horrendous price those stricken by age will be stuck in old people's homes and financially completely shamelessly exploited to the last drop of blood suicides will be ever more numerous as will also euthanasia because criminals addicted to business will draw monetary use out of it whereby it will come to death tourism in countries in which help rendered the dying and murder and suicide will be allowed the death helper will be a dealer without illusions and he will sell his suicide poison to everybody who wants to have it the drug problem will gain more and more ground whereby internationally organized criminal gangs will maneuver even children into the vicious cycle of drug addiction the bodies of the people will be destroyed by drugs and addiction and towards the beginning of the third millennium a dangerous new drug with the name crystal will cause a furor amongst addicted people whose faces and bodies will be furrowed and ruined within a few months and aged in such a way as if the addicted were monsters a hundred years old through selfishness hate revenge lovelessness virtuelessness and addiction to pleasures and so forth the human's thoughts and feelings cool more and more whereby the psyche and the consciousness and the morality are corrupted all those who are addicted to drugs of any kind that they drink inhale or inject into their blood will become like wild animals and lose control of themselves and many of them will rob steal break in and murder rape and extort in order to get the poisons to which they are addicted their lives will be a torment and become a real catastrophe the already near future would bring a situation where every human will try to attain as much pleasure 
worldly possessions, delight, money and wealth as he possibly can, and it will be that even the parents deceive their children, the children their parents, and the siblings will deceive each other if they can thereby gain a profit for themselves. Marriages will no longer be formed out of love, rather out of addiction to profit, for the sake of appearances and as a consequence of erroneous and short-term confusions of the feelings. And so it happens ever more frequently that husband and wife will be unfaithful and divorce as often as they marry. As it once was in Sodom and Gomorrah, in the future many women and men will go through the streets and into pleasure houses in order to take everybody and anybody as sexual partners just as everybody or anybody pleases. Many married women and men would ever more frequently utilize other partners from outside the marriage. Thus many men would sire children about whom they know nothing, and women would bear children without knowing the names of the fathers. And therefore it will be that every tenth birth is not of the legal father, which is foisted on to the husband. And it will be that children bear children, and that mothers will not name the names of the fathers. Many children will have no father or mother because they divorced or disappeared unrecognized, because they do not want to be a father or mother or live in a marriage, because the order and tradition of a good and functional family will be lost, as also the laws of marriage will have no more value, as if the human had become wild again. And as already happens, it will also be that in the future and more and more, fathers will sexually abuse their daughters, young and old pedophiles sexually offend against children, women of every age are raped, shamed, and murdered not seldom in all openness and all over the world as a result of common and ever-increasing sex tourism. Men will rape men, and women, women, and children go to the highest bidder through their own parents, relatives, or through child abductors, rented or sold to the highest bidder. Fathers sire children with their own daughters, children and mothers with their own sons' descendants, whereby a mixing of the blood comes about in the same family and, thereby, the evil spreads itself from bed to bed, which invokes psychic and consciousness-related damage, and a state where the humans do not truly know people in true love, rather only acknowledge people by their sexual practices. Through their way of life, and through their thoughts and feelings, and through their lack of virtues and all good values, the people will have aggrieved, tormented, and haggard faces, because their entire falsely lived lives will be mirrored in them. The time is coming when nobody who speaks for law and order will be heard any more, as it has already been for a long period of time that none are heard who speak against the religious and sectarian beliefs and painstakingly spread the truthful truth in regard to life, creation and its laws and directives, which especially will be again approaching this time, when, in the third millennium, a German religious fanatic pope will assume the pontificate, who believes, through his fanatical belief in God, that he can save the world from its disintegration and downfall. Around the world, the devastating machinations of the religions and sects will spread out again, and innumerable false messiahs and false prophets will infatuate the unstable and blind to the truth masses of humanity, and newly lead them into madness, and many of these believers will carry weapons and build bombs, and in their fanaticism, thereby spread murder by many thousandfold, as well as great destruction. The murdering and destroying fanatics of religions and sects will, in their death-bringing fiery beliefs, speak of justice in the name of God, and thereby spread misery, need, death, and corruption. And it will be that the fanatical Islamists' bloody revenge on the distant descendants of the Christians, for the earlier crucifixions by the Christians, will come into being when they accomplish their deadly and destructive acts through irrepressible terror all over the world. Threatening thunder will crack over the earth and deaths. In their thousands will rage when the criminal national powers of the USA release war into the wide world, and when Israel's national forces spread just the same terror, murder, death and corruption as the Palestinians themselves, from whom uncountable suicide bombers will go. All over the world, all variety of military and rebellious forms of murderers will recruit, 
out of all levels of the population and drill the recruits into being murder machines devoid of feelings and conscience, to whom also every kind of torture is a shining joy. Organised murder and terror commandos will live secretly in cities worldwide and plan and carry out deadly attacks in order to kill thousands of people and produce unimagined destruction. There will be no more order and no effective rule to protect the lives of the people because, through the fault of the warmongering national powerful ones, the rebellious, religious, sectarian, and fanatic terrorism will flare up like a bright flash in the night in order to sow death and corruption. Through inhumane terror attacks, torture and through war, very many people will degenerate and fall back into barbarism, whereby everybody will scream for the torture and death of their neighbor, when they are of a different view or act counter to the law. Thus hate and revenge will spread out, and even the order-bringing organizations will be evilly attacked, and their efforts to create order will be hindered, whereby human atrocities among the people can gain ground, and nobody more is going to hurry to help the other if she or he gets into need. Already soon, humans will no longer align themselves with justice, but only with their belief and blood, while the judge thereafter only exploits his office so that the little man is hanged and the great scoundrel is let free, as true justice will no longer be asked for, rather everything will be judged only in terms of money, belief, and appearances. Children will, in the course of the next decades, be ever more surrendered to neglect because the parents hunt more and more for money and pleasures, whereby the children are abused in regard to love and upbringing and are left alone, as they are thrown out of the house and family life like young creatures and neglected because nobody will bother any more about them and hold a protecting hand over them, whereby they slide into scenes of the asocial, narcotics, drugs, theft, robbery, criminality, and prostitution. Worldwide, hate will gain ground more and more, and the greed for power of the nation's powerful ones will recognize no more boundaries resulting in bad laws being passed to torment the citizen and from which nobody can remain spared, not the elderly, not the youth, nor the children. Houses will be destroyed and plundered by criminal gangs, or the houses will be broken into in order to ambush the residents, rob them and even to kill them. The people will become ever more indifferent to their neighbors, so they will also close their eyes when others are abused on public streets women raped or children abducted. Children will become merchandise and sex objects. Their weakness will be forgotten and they will be trained like animals to be thrown away after use or slaughtered and murdered because humans no longer know love, rather still only ghastliness. Ever since a long time ago, every person has known through public media, such as radio and newspapers, what is happening at all ends of the earth, yet that will only be the start. As the means of communications and news spreading will spread rapidly, as through television, through which events can be directly followed pictorially in all corners of the world, as also, however, through various electronic telecommunications devices that, over satellites, transmit everything up to the Earth's hindmost nook, in word and picture, while in only 40 years, even the simplest citizen will carry a pocket telephone around with him and would use it at every possible and impossible opportunity. Because of the constantly rising standard of living of the people in the industrialized countries, they close their eyes to misery in the third world. Indeed, they see the starving children on television, whose eyes and mouths as well as wounds are covered with innumerable flies, and those who are hunted like rabbits as target practice for the murderous military or those who will be killed to get to their organs which will be sold dearly for transplantation. Many people, as regards their neighbor, will not only be indifferent, rather also merciless. Subsequently, they turn their eyes away so they do not have to see the misery and the need of the neighbor, and they will not worry that children or adults die of hunger because they will give them nothing, or only very inadequate alms that would suffice for neither life nor death. The better-positioned person of the prosperous countries sleeps on bags full of gold, and what he gives with one hand he takes away again with the other, whereby the needy neither live nor die, 
rather than can only vegetate in misery. The human plies trade with everything that comes into his fingers and, as a result, everything has its price, even the water that is our common planetary possession, and everything will be sold and nothing more given. Consequently, every gift demands a gift in return. As children will be hunted and killed for the price of their organs, grown people, for money, offer themselves for their organs for transplantation, or they bequeath them as a legacy, so for them nothing more is sacred, not their body, nor their blood, their organs, their consciousness or psyche, and if they could sell their spirit form and make a profit from it, they would do that too and people will be murdered for treacherously, just as by execution, while irresponsible doctors, in greed for profit, will intentionally cut up the bodies of the dead for the sale of their organs. Already the human has changed the face of the earth so badly that it can no longer be returned to its original form, and that will not be the end, as much worse changes will happen in the future when the forests are further cleared and the fields and mountains have been transformed into human residential settlements, concreted over and asphalted, because the human continues to be deluded that he is ruler of earth and life, although he can never name power over the planets as his own, because they set their nature to defend and will show the human in his limits. Also, when nature defends itself against the human madness of planetary destruction, the earth becomes ever more naked and less fruitful and through the fault of humans the air will burn, because the ozone shield will slowly be destroyed. Through the people, the water of the earth will increasingly turn into ill-smelling sloughs, and all life will slowly wither there while the earth's riches will be completely exhausted, whereby all goods will become scarce, and thereby the hate that the humans have for one another will climb, because everybody wants to have that which the neighbor still has. The consciousness, as well as reason and understanding of humans, will become his prisoners, and he will be drunk from religious and sectarian beliefs, thereby he will not notice that he, through religions and sects, will be ever more deceived and kept distant from the effective truth of creation and its laws and directives, and as a result, he chases after unreal religious and sectarian images and reflections, which hold him back from the truth and make him a willing sheep of the wicked ones. The religions and sects fall upon their believers like evil carnivorous animals, drive them together and hurl them into the deepest abyss of misguidance and ignorance, and to drive it all sufficiently, they set one up against the other in order to be able to rip everyone in their claws and deprive them of the life of truth. As it has been until now, the religions and sects will, for a long time yet, Rule through their representatives and gurus in order to rule and command the human who is innocent and inactive in so far as knowledge is concerned. Yet by and by in the more distant future, they will slowly lose their cult places in which they preach nonsense and mislead and enslave the people. Yet their time is coming that they will hide their faces and must keep their names secret in order not to become the victims of the rage of the people as a result of their misleading them. Yet it is so, however, that every believer, in truth, is a serf of religions and sects, even though each one erroneously believes that he is a free person. Yet that will change, because the time will come when nobody, or still almost nobody, takes part in the gatherings of the gurus, the masters, exalted ones, enlightened ones, the Pfaffenkeption, literally, pastors' little caps, popes and priests, and so on, because many of the people will raise themselves up and position themselves against the religions and sects in order to conquer their millennia-old lies with the truth. Overpopulation will climb incessantly because of the irrationality of the people, and soon they will be as numerous on the earth as ants, and when they are bumped they will swarm around distraught and headless so that they lose all control over themselves and many will be crushed when they helplessly sink into the masses. The religions and sects will, in the future, mix themselves as much as the people who, through the mixing of peoples, make their own people become a multicultural nation. Around the world more and more, 
Peace will be hypocritically spoken of, while mendacious and sectarian national powerful ones furtively stir up wars and bring them to breaking out. And in every location, families and neighbors who have become enemies prepare hell on earth for each other, or peoples and tribes who are enemies fight in bloody feuds. Already for a long time the way of nature is lost for the human, and that will even continue to happen very much more, as the human believes, in his high-handedness, that he is the ruler over life and death. In times to come people will be less and less satisfied with their own bodies, and so they will allow all kinds of operations on themselves in order to be better proportioned and more beautiful, as they themselves imagine, whereby, however, the entire business damages their health and not seldom leads to mutilations or even death. There will no longer be cohesion in families, and the family members will scatter themselves to the winds more and more. Through beauty cures and beauty aids, people will decline to an early externally old appearance, and they will earlier have wrinkles and white hair like old people because the utilized means will also damage the skin in the same way as do the ever more dangerous and increasingly hotter rays of the sun. In coming times, many people will wander around in life without pause and be without leadership or direction because, due to inadequate love and warm-heartedness, as well as relationships from person to person, their consciousness, thoughts and feelings as well as psyche are stunted, whereby very many psychic illnesses and breakdowns result that not seldom will lead to suicide because no more help will be accessible to these people. In the course of time, very many people will renounce religions and sects, yet in spite of that, not sort out the truth regarding creation and also not its laws and directives because they want to steer their own lives like a mounted animal, even though they lack the necessary knowledge and experience. And already the earth human stands before the door that will enable him to determine the masculinity or femininity of the progeny in the body of the woman, from which self-evidently results that, at last, already from the ground up, the gender of the descendant will be determined because the female egg will be fertilized in vitreo with the corresponding sperm and then set into the womb, while all other undesired life will be killed off. The human will take himself more and more for creation, especially the powerful ones who snatch up everything from land and worldly possessions just exactly however it pleases them, while the normal citizen is too poor and weak and will be treated like the lowliest livestock, whereby the housing for the common people will become like prisons in which the people spend time in fear of the powerful ones and the hate in the people unfolds ungovernably. The hate in humans will create a secret order of destruction that rages darkly in people and engenders an evil poison that is aligned such that the authorities are to be fought against and, at the same time, to achieve money and wealth for oneself and control over the earth. Yet in the end the weak will listen to the rules of the powerful, whereby, however, it will be that laws will be passed in the dark whereby the poison of hate is aligned against the religions and sects, and the thorn of hate spreads against them in order to clear appropriate space for the truthful truth. It will come to pass that the humans will become inactive, going around with an empty look and not knowing where they should go, because when the religions and sects disappear, they will have no more cult places and no more cult preachers and no more sect leaders who can lead them in madness and confusion, which is why they will initially be without a goal, or like a germinating seed that cannot yet strike roots. So, as a result, the human wanders around without hope, destitute, humbled, and senselessly seeking everywhere for a foothold, which they first, however, find when they utilize the creational truth and the creational laws and directives. But first, they will hate and fight themselves and hate their lives before they find the path to truth. When the third millennium comes, many illnesses and plagues will rage, and many waters will be dried out and will further dry out, whereas other water will become brackish or poisonous or become a rarity, whereby many people will have their existences and their 
lives threatened, which leads to them having to painstakingly reestablish much of what they destroyed. And they expend means to defend that which remains, because some farther thinking people recognize that what they evilly wrenched from nature must be returned again. However, the third millennium will also be the time when people will be frightened of the future, because the world political, military, and environmental situation will be very precarious because the national powers of the USA and Israel in the same way threaten with war and destruction as worldwide will also the rebellious terrorists, and in addition, because humans have so terribly plundered, raped, and desecrated nature, it will hit back with violent sea quakes and earthquakes and with monstrous rainstorms and primeval storms. The earth would, through the fault of mankind, through his overpopulation, and the thereby connected monstrous demands, and through his hostile conduct towards nature and his destruction, as well as through the plundering of resources, raise itself against the people and quake around the globe with primeval force and tear people into death in their hundreds of thousands, whereby entire countries will be destroyed. The earth will avenge itself on mankind for his behavior, because he will not have listened to the prophecies and predictions of the wise that warned about all the evil, as a result, from then on, he must take evil threats from nature and violent destruction into account because, from then on, and until far into the third millennium, villages will be buried under mudslides as well as snow and ice slides, while in other places abysses will open in the ground and, destroying everything, will tear everything into themselves, never more to reach the surface. But still the human will be obstinate and not listen to the words advice and warnings of the prophets and the wise, yet that will be avenged, as violent fires will destroy great forests, villages and towns and demand many human lives, because the conflagrations will have primeval force and drive people from their native homelands, which will be robbed by unscrupulous plundering, as it will also be in the villages and towns that will be abandoned because of sea quakes and earthquakes and because of storms. And through the fault of humans, chlorofluorocarbons sluice through the atmosphere. The earth will burn, and melanoma and non-melanoma skin cancer will take hold and demand many deaths, and all that because, through human irrationality, the majority of the ozone shield, which protects against the rays of the sun, will be destroyed, whereby the atmosphere will be like a curtain full of holes, and the strong and burning light of the sun will burn the skin, and the eyes of many people will be permanently blinded but the angst of humans will, however, be too late, because too much will already be destroyed and annihilated by the turn of the millennium, resulting in ever more deserts overtaking the earth and the crushing deluge like water becoming ever more violent and deeper, ripping everything with it, flooding and destroying. Through the clear felling of rainforests, the oxygen level in the air will, already, before the third millennium, and until far along into it, sink unnoticeably, which will have effects on the health of humans and animals, while at the same time the pollution of the environment and pollution of the air will have taken on such forms that people will be made sick from it, and the weak among them will perish. And in the third millennium, the time comes when big parts of the continents disappear, and the people will have to flee to the mountains, yet their sense of the catastrophes will only be of short duration because they will forget everything again quickly, and therefore make an effort to do much rebuilding, because they are already creating phantasmagoria through movies and television, as well as later through a worldwide netting of computers and electronics, through which they deceive themselves and see things that do not exist, and are only visually determined for the eye. Subsequently, their sense for reality disappears, and they can no longer distinguish between reality and fiction whereby they lose themselves more and more in the labyrinth of life, while those who produce phantasms commercially as well as religious and sectarian phantasms have an easy game with the people of faith, who they deceive in every possible manner and make them into humble beings like cringing dogs. Towards the end of the second millennium, researchers will clone animals and alter their genes any way they like. And in the third millennium, Researchers will have the audacity to create in vitro humans who are intended to serve as human spare parts, stores for organs.
even now it has already happened, and it will continue in the third millennium, that the earth human irrevocably exterminates many animal species and their subspecies in the air or water or on the land, because for him profit is more important than the conservation of the fauna. As it already is now, it will also be in the third millennium, and indeed extremely increased, that children no longer enjoy a genuine upbringing, and their consciousnesses will no longer be educated in the context of evolution, as they will no longer be taught the truth by their parents. So they will be more and more ignorant regarding the truth and of the lessons of life. So they, like their parents, are hopeless, ignorant, and remonstrating, and are dedicated only to pleasures. Also in the third millennium, the human will become more and more aggressive, and deludes himself that he is the highest power, the result of which is that he will strike out everywhere in hate and wrath, as well as in avarice and jealousy, just how and where it pleases him, and he will be strong in his evil thoughts and feelings, and his degenerated behavior, as the acquired power makes him unpredictable and he will destroy, in a blind rage with howls of joy, much that is painstakingly acquired and constructed. Well into the third millennium, the human will remain faint-hearted and a dwarf in the development of his knowledge and wisdom and love, and will be driven by power behavior and domination over fellow humans while his head will be stuffed full with unnecessary and false knowledge of mad religious, sectarian, philosophical, militaristic, and combat-orientated teachings, and of teachings of the thirst for blood, revenge, and retribution. As since time immemorial, the earth human still will not know for a long time into the third millennium why he lives and dies, what death means, and reincarnation and birth, because as since time immemorial, he will wave his arms senselessly, futilely seeking the truth of creation and its laws and directives, as since earliest times he hangs on to religions and sects that bring him to whimpering like small children. In the third millennium, as has been since the earliest times, the believers of the various religions and sects will fight each other because every believer wants to have the only correct God. It is all the same if he is named Shiva, God or Allah. So, in some places, the earth will become a battlefield when Islamists, Christians and Jews make war on one another, as in ancient times, and as it also happens today, as everybody insults the unbelief of those with other beliefs, and they all want to defend and spread the purity of their belief with their blood, even when great powers stand in opposition to them, who question the righteousness of their conduct. As is already the case now in 1958, in the third millennium innumerable people will also be locked out of the life of the society and, furthermore, many must eke out their lives as poor, as social, as beggars, as well as benefiting from handouts, because they are not accepted by society, rather thrown out or are unemployed, and are treated as if they were subhuman, against which no ruler and government undertakes anything, Rather, they even exploit the poor and beggars with all kinds of taxes and charges, whereby they cannot afford a roof over their heads, and have no citizens' rights any more because they are outcasts of those who live in excess, and they will be half-naked because they cannot afford clothing. And when they have something to sell, it will only be their bodies, for their organs, or the path of whoredom. In the third millennium, many people will listen to the old prophecies and predictions, to the proverbs of the prophets and the warnings of the wise, which have been handed down since ancient times, and they will thirst for retribution and provoke the time in which the people stand up and call for the truth. However, before the people call for the truth, it will be lost in an impenetrable labyrinth in which great angst and suspicion exist, and the human is restlessly driven forward in order to find a way out of all the misery and the need. The truth of creation and its laws and directives, as well as the teachings of spirit and teachings of life, will be spread loud and strong and worldwide. Yet the earth human will not hear them, because only few who pursue reason and understanding will utilize the great teachings, 
while all the others want more and more possessions and indulge in phantasms which they have arranged in their heads, spurred on through bad and false prophets in religious and sectarian matters. And the time will be long before all this all comes to pass. A long time into the third millennium, long. Eight hundred years long? Because, first then, the seeds of the teachings of the Spirit, the teachings of creation and its laws and directives, as well as the teachings of life, will slowly begin to germinate in the mass of humankind, because they slowly open their eyes and ears, and honestly begin to seek the actual truth. The humans of the earth will listen and hear the prophet's teachings. Then finally, they will open their eyes to see and learn to understand one another, and each would know that when one person is beaten or injured with words, that the other perceives the pain. It will be the time when, out of humanity, people become one and understand that each is a smaller part of the neighbor, and only unity gives strength, and neither skin color nor belief Rather, only commonality and effective truth regarding creation and its laws and directives are of significance. And in distant times it will be that only one single and valuable language will be spoken worldwide, and the people will finally become real humans. And in distant times it will be that the earth humans have conquered outer space and travel into the deep expanses of the universes, when they have constructed artificial stations outside the earth's atmosphere, in which many people will reside, work, and live. And it would be in that distant time that the earth human builds great cities in the seas, and he will ordinarily move around in the depths of the water and nourish himself on all kinds of fruit from the sea. And in distant times it will be that humans talk reasonably and respectfully with one another, and they will accept the old messages of the true prophets because their thoughts and feelings will be open for one another, and the consciousness and the psyche will be balanced. And in distant times it will be that the people will be many times older than they are in today's time, in the year 1958, because their age will be hundreds of years. And in distant times it will be that the people recognize the power of their consciousness, and learn the things that the true prophets knew, and which were kept hidden as a secret until now. So they will open one door after another and gain monstrous cognitions, knowledge and wisdom about the truth of creation and its laws and directives, in order therewith to use and develop the powers of their consciousness. And in distant times it will be that the people finally find their way out of their dark labyrinth, and will find sublime life bubbling again like a clear spring. And in distant times, it will be that the people relearn and adopt the teachings of the Spirit, the teachings of creation and the extent of its directives and laws, and the teachings of life, and will be knowing, and parents will again raise their children and instruct them in the teachings of truth so that they understand life, dying, death, reincarnation and birth, as well as earth and the heavens. And in distant times, it will be that the human will become greater in stature and more skillful, and the powers of his consciousness will encompass everything, and he also will possess everything that he wants to have. And in distant times, it will be that the man alone will no longer be the ruling power, because from then on, the woman will steer the fate of the world and humanity as true mother of the earth, because she will wield her scepter over the man and break his imperiousness. Tyranny, power, lust and addiction to war, in order to end the times of ugly masculine barbarism and nip in the bud man's devilish and murderous and high-handed acts in order to finally allow peace on earth. And in distant times, it will be that true love wakes in earth humans, and this will be shared with all, whereby the existence transmutes in an easy time, and long-cherished dreams and wishes become reality, while the evolution of the consciousness grasps possession of all people, whereby enters the true end of barbarism. And in distant times, 
it will be that religious and sectarian belief will no longer be of validity, but rather only the pure truth of creation and the extent of its laws, whereby the happy days of humankind begin, and the person will find people again and recognize and honor them as equals. And in distant times it will be, when the fourth millennium after Emmanuel's Christian, time reckoning comes, that the earth and its humanity will have its creational order again, and there will be true love and unity, true freedom and harmony, as well as true worldwide peace. And in distant times, it will be that the people will hurry through the universe from one end to the other in great and powerful spaceships, and they will have no more boundaries. And in distant times, it will be that the forests, wetlands, meadows and fields bloom again, as also the deserts, which will be enlivened and planted, and in which many kinds of trees, bushes, grasses and flowers will reveal their glory, so the earth will be a wonderful garden in which the human will respect and honor all that lives, creeps and flies. And in distant times it will be that the human reconstructs and cleans everything that he destroyed or soiled because, from then on, he will honor and protect nature and life, as he will be knowing and wise and thereby think of the future of the planet and humanity, and bring respect and veneration to them all. And in distant times it will be that every human goes in step with every other, and one no longer harms the other, and the people grant each other trust again to no longer be deceived, to have nothing more stolen, to no longer be robbed, and no longer be murdered. And in distant times it will be that the earth humans know everything about their own bodies and the bodies of all animals, as they will also will be knowledgeable about all the things of the world and life, as well as the creational natural laws, whereby sickness and plagues will be healed before they can come into existence because it will be that every human will be just as much his own knowing and capable healer as he will be for his fellow humans. Collectively, the human will understand that he can only exist and live in the community, that one must help the other, that he must give and may not only take, and that he, as an individual, must see and understand himself to be as a custodian of the planet, humanity and human order, and in distant times it will be that the earth humans have learned to give and share in honesty and love, and that stinginess is every bit as much a means to achieve discontentment as is being closed off from the neighbor. Thereby, no circumstances of loneliness can come. Still, the human must learn everything first, and utilize the powers of his consciousness, and the teachings of the spirit, as well as the teachings of creation, and the extent of its laws, as well as the teachings of life. Yet for this, an iron fist is required for enforcement, with which order drives out chaos, and the human finds the correct path again. And in distant times it will be, when the fourth millennium after Emmanuel comes, that the human is the carrier of the creational truth, and that all living things are creations of the one and only creation of the universal consciousness and that creation alone is and knows the secret of all things, and that it stands immeasurably much higher than all the gods and idols who, without exception, are of human origin. And in distant times it will be that the humans remember the proverbs of the true prophets, and remember what was once in all the past, as they will also know what the future will be, because, through looking out ahead, they will grasp the events and the course and the change of the world, humanity and the universes, as well as the secret of life and dying, and will thereby have no more angst for their own death, because they will know that life eternally continues in alternation with death life, and to new life on earth as creation has determined through the unshakable extent of its laws, which are unchangeable for all great times, and are of eternal validity. Eduard A. Meyer Schloss, Eutikon ZH, Schweiz, 24. August 1958.